What is up everybody, it is Joe from JLW Games coming at you with another cool video and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day as uh, we move on for more Westwood here in Planet Coaster and I'm very excited here because we get tackling a lot more of the um, Invention Company and that is something that is very exciting and um, I hope you guys are enjoying it, I'm enjoying it and uh, after this episode I feel like the park becomes a lot more complete, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, you can start to see the pieces come together, and it's really exciting. And uh, I hope you guys are excited as well. And I wanted to do something a little bit more unique for this station. Kind of make these, like, little... Um support structures and stuff around the walls and I thought that would look a little bit different and kind of cool and you know uh, I'm gonna do a lot more uh, detailing around uh, this particular station and stuff like that it's gonna look really awesome and really cool and uh, we're also I already said that but uh, we're also gonna add uh, some uh, pathways going around the lift hill in it area and stuff like that we actually do um, complete the layout here in this episode um, I might go back and adjust it just a smidge. I actually wrote it afterwards and uh, fixed a couple of rough spots uh, off screen afterwards, but um, uh, it turned out pretty good and uh, it's actually a very smooth ride. And uh, I'll, I'll love to hear what you guys think about the layout. The layout is fairly simple. It's going to have six inversions. Um, it's not like an insanely ridiculous, you know, floorless coaster. It's kind of like just a normal sized, you know, um, basic floorless coaster in the park and that I thought would be a great addition to the park and it, I think it fits very nicely um you know with the theming of you know with the uh, invention company and stuff like that and the storyline to this ride is still developing slightly but I want this to be some flying contraption that some mad professor or some mad scientist created um so it's gonna be like some flying contraption and um so i'm still kind of developing a name and stuff like that um so there's not much of a storyline there i mean there is but um the invention company is literally the storyline itself you know these are inventions that pretty much crazy people have created and this is going to be a flying contraption that a scientist created uh, for some form of transport around Westwood, and that's going to be the main focus uh, about this ride, is this uh, scientist was trying to create this contraption that would fly over the head of Westwood so people could actually use it for transportation, but um, the design kind of got a little wonky, and um, it ended up being a pretty dangerous um uh, invention so it did end up getting canceled and not approved by Westwood uh, and the scientist was a little bit upset about that so uh, I'm actually developing what is uh, the scientist name is actually gonna be and everything uh, just for fun and stuff because he does um, want his kind of want his revenge because he thought he could perfect this uh, ride or this um, contraption uh, and actually help people get transferred around the park but uh, the Westwood folks were like, well, we already got a steam engine train to get us around, so why not leave it there? And uh, that that gets people around pretty well, so why do we need this flying contraption? But this mad scientist, you know, is he's determined to uh, get his um, to get his flying contraption uh, out to the public. So. Um, again, it, it ends up turning into a pretty crazy ride, and it was a little bit too dangerous for the public, so they decide not to let it fly after the test run. So you guys, uh, the riders, are actually the test riders of this ride, pretty much. You're like the test dummies, uh, the volunteers, that... Um, and everything so that's pretty much what you are what your role is playing as is because sometimes the guests have a role in the storyline which is actually a lot of fun so like i said this has six is going to have six inversions it starts off with a drop and a obviously and then a vertical loop followed by a cobra roll which i thought you know cobra rolls is a nice inversion to have you know for a b m and then kind of like this oversized corkscrew um it was originally going to be like this large zero g roll but it kind of developed more into an oversized corkscrew kind of elements and uh it actually turned out quite good um 
after a bit more smoothing. Uh, I do think I do have to smooth it out just a bit more and uh, work on the shape just a little bit more, and it'll be in good shape to be a nice oversized corkscrew. It actually turned out quite nicely, and I'm actually quite um, satisfied of how it looks and how it turned out. So um, that's really nice, and uh, then it's followed by a quick turn, and then an actual zero-g roll itself. I used a lot of the end game elements um, because I feel like it gives a little bit of smoother ride sometimes rather than me trying to actually create it, and it actually works very well. Like, the end game zero-g roll is actually a very, very good. Like, never be ashamed to use the end game um, stuff. The only bad part is, is you can't really smooth it along with uh, some of your other sections of track. In some cases, you're better off making your own custom inversions, but in some cases, you, you know, it's not a bad idea to use them. Uh, so, and then we also get into this little airtime hill, um, which actually doesn't create any airtime, which kind of surprised me a little bit. It kind of does this tur tight turn into a hill, and I thought it'd create a little bit of excitement and uh, maybe slightly a little bit of fear to it as well, and a little bit of trial and error to make it as smooth as possible because you're coming out of a pretty big uh, hill from a zero-g roll into this, like, very small tight turn and stuff like that, so... Overall, I thought the layout looks good. I think the coaster itself uh, turned out to look pretty nice, and I'm very satisfied with that. Um, it's got a very good look to it, and um, I was pretty, 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 pretty excited about that. Um, you know, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then after this, uh, we get into the next inversion, which is actually a corkscrew, which actually fit very perfectly over there. And then at this point, I'm just like, well, maybe it's about time to hit back to the brake run. And um, I actually make the decision after I get it to the brake run to like, um, after seeing some test runs on it and stuff like that, I decided to, you know, it still has quite a bit of speed left. So why don't I throw in an extra element in there? So I actually end up throwing in a helix here at the end of the ride. And then it has like this really cool like S bend after the helix, which actually fit very well. So the extra uh, elements that I added, I think actually was a very good addition because it's actually a very nice high speed, uh, really cool helix uh, that actually turned out pretty nice. I'm very proud of it. And um, again, this is a very basic BNM. And as for the brake run, uh, a lot of people might think it's a little bit long, but I tried to get a little bit creative with it. So you got your friction brakes, and it's going to turn into the transfer track. And then you're going to get down to like another quick set of brakes at an angle, t turning back into the station. Now, a lot of people say it's going to be too long. I probably are going to say it's going to be a too long of a brake run, but I actually like the way it looks, and I think it fits very nicely. So. I have no issues with it, um, so I think it looks really good. And um, you know, I, I you know I'm not the best coaster builder out there, but I, this one was actually turned out pretty sm darn smooth um, for the most part. You know, I, I actually touched up a little bit off screen after this recording. Um, nothing major to where you, that you needed to see or anything. You know, I actually wrote it uh, and smoothed it out uh, accordingly. So. Um, it's nice to do the POV and try and figure out um, where you need to smooth it out a little bit. So, um, again, I don't do POVs during these videos Some, for the simple fact, you know, uh, I like to keep it a surprise for the cinematic video and stuff like that. Um, because it, it just is more fun to it, you know, because the... I, you guys are pretty much the park guests. You guys are going to be the people that are going to be riding these rides, and you know, you got to wait till opening day to ride these rides, and uh, that's going to be the main thing. So, I hope uh, at the pace that we're going, uh, after looking kind of like how it's starting to piece together, if I keep actively, you know, doing videos like this, you know, for the next, you know, month or so, we might be able to get this out by next month, I'm hoping. I'm not entirely sure, I'm not going to make any promises, but um, I would say I don't want to go any later than May. May's going to be the absolute, you know, longest date, um, you know, and I might head for uh, an opening day for May because, you know, a lot of parks open in around the second week of May around there, maybe, or first, second week of May usually, and uh, for parks just starting out, usually I would say they would open up in around May and run till about October. So, uh, and then you can start experimenting, you know, maybe we can start opening through Christmas or we can open, start opening up in March, stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna have a lot of videos on this 
park when it first opens. I, re uh, I want to let you guys know that I'm not just planning on a cinematic video. I've got a lot of different videos planned for the opening of this park. And some of which are going to be really cool. You're going to have this regular cinematic video, obviously. Then I have an idea of making a video of a park tour um, in first person. So I'm going to be walking around the park like I'm in first person. Because uh, there's actually a cheat where you can do that. And, um, and I'm going to do commentary like I'm a guest in the park. Um, exploring the park on opening day, you know, and uh, kind of rating each ride, you know, like, ah, oh, we just got off Iron Ghost, it was a really awesome RMC, recommended and stuff, you know, it's going to be very interesting, I'm kind of developing what I'm going to do in that interesting, um, you know, uh, video and stuff like that, but I want this park to feel real, so there's going to be, you know, some grand opening videos and stuff like that. I even had an idea of, like, a documentary, uh, which was another idea, video idea that I had for this, and when I say documentary, I'm going to make, it's going to sound like it's a real park. Um, it's, uh, like, they're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna be talking like it's a real park, you know, and kind of acting, a acting it out a little bit. And it's gonna be real fun, and I hope you guys, uh, I wanna let you, ha I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think about those ideas. Um, I think they're very fun and very, uh, creative, because you don't see anybody doing anything really like that on these kind of games. And I wanna create, do something a little bit different, you know, you finish a park, have a grand opening and actually make a park tour as if you were a guest in the park. That would be really cool. You know, you can do a park tour, you know, from like third person and you're like over the head. But to make it feel more real, you know, if you're like in the park as a guest, I think it makes things completely different. And it's a completely different experience. I think that makes the park look a little bit better when you're in first person on the ground, you know, in my opinion. It makes the it always looks a little bit more realistic. It always looks way different on the ground than when you're up in the air over the head. So, um, just to talk about what we're actually doing here, I actually created this little gift shop here. This is actually going to be the gift shop for the B&M coaster. Um, I'm still working on a name for the ride itself, so uh, be free, feel free to give your suggestion down below in the comments. Love to hear them. You guys are always great on uh, trying to come up with some names. But I got the storyline set for this, so you've already heard it. Um, you got the scientist who uh, is testing out a is looking for brave volunteers um, to test out his new flying contraption which may or may not go wrong and obviously it goes kind of wrong so it doesn't get passed by Westwood so that's kind of the storyline um, a scientist that's trying to get this flying contraption uh, for new transportation and it doesn't really work out very well so um, that's kind of how that's uh, going so the storyline is a little bit inspired by Silver Dollar City's wildfire uh, kind of what this ride is based off in the first place. Um, it kind of has a similar um, storyline in a way. There's actually like a professor or scientist or whatnot. I don't know it very well or wildfire storyline very well, but uh, the fuel they used to make this flying, it was, it was like a flying contraption or something like that. Uh, the fuel they used uh, to power that um, contraption was actually called Wildfire, and that's where that ride gets its name. So that's kind of a neat thing, and I kind of thought I'd go off with that and make my own little story about this mad scientist that actually makes a flying contraption, uh, and he's testing it out for transportation for the city of Westwood. Um, so it's kind of an interesting story. It might be a little close to the Wildfire story, but I think it was kind of clever. But um, anyways, we get over here to this transfer track uh, of this, because I want to make sure this park feels real. So I, every coaster is going to have some transfer tracks. Uh, so it's going to be running two trains. So I'm going to have a section for two trains in this little shed. And this little shed is going to be kind of like the maintenance building where they store the trains at night uh, when they're not in use. Uh, which is very, very cool. And this little station, or this little, uh, it was actually this little, um, the, this little, uh, transfer track building, 
uh, actually storage building actually turned out really nicely and it was actually a little bit difficult because I was a little off grid so it was very difficult a little bit of how I was going to do the roof and everything but I got it done uh, in a really cool way and actually made it look pretty decent with a little bit of advanced you know building style and stuff like that uh, ended up being okay so um, you know I think my building's getting better each and every time and uh, I truly do believe that and uh, let me guys know if you guys believe that I think I'm pretty personally doing a lot better uh, than what I was when I first started the park so I might go back and actually um, adjust a couple buildings to make them look a little bit better in the end so that's gonna be really really cool so um, again I would love to hear you guys in the comments what you think about this coaster what you think about the storyline and I'd love to hear your suggestions for a name for this ride which would also be cool I'm also still looking for a name for the mine train as well so that's also a name I still haven't actually decided on uh, you know but I have a, some ideas in mind but we'll see how what happens uh, so I'm always open for your guys suggestions on names and storylines um, but I love the storyline that I come up with this and it's gonna be really really cool so um, there's a lot of rides to come in this section of the park I think it's gonna be a very exciting section of the park and I hope you guys agree um, I'm thinking about doing one more coaster and it's most likely gonna be a, like a family coaster a very small coaster maybe a kitty coaster or something like that um, that's the only uh, thing I might be doing left because uh, opening this is not gonna have a ton a crap ton of coasters you know this is going to be a, like a family owned style theme park uh, so it's going to be really neat uh, I'm going to be adding stuff throughout the years though so it'll be really really cool and uh, I can't wait um, to get uh, these parks going and just adding on to them throughout the years and stuff like that it's going to be something special and I hope you guys agree so that's all I really got for you guys today I hope you guys enjoy the video make sure you comment like and subscribe for more content like this and uh, let me guys know what you guys think in the comments, of course. And as always, have a great day and an even cooler tomorrow. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and goodbye.